I want everybody to understand. I'm going to look into this camera right here, so I hope you see me very well here. I want to everybody to understand and remember that everything I say from this point, she backed it up, all right? So it's basically <laughs> zero, all right? You have no hope, no chance. Pass the 20 years, and that comes from experience. It also is the experience. You have no of, chance of passing 20 years, you're saying? No, no, no. You can pass 20 years. Yeah. You'll probably be roommates, and you'll probably be overweight in a busted Pillsbury well, Biscuit can, uh -oh. or you'll probably be with the exception to the rule. But the data shows us, plus yeah. the experience that she expressed, that it's a very difficult thing. And this is what I want men to know. Yeah, It is very difficult. Many people will simplify it for you. They will say, oh, just do this and do that. And they will lead you on a wild goose mm -hmm. chase. And that's my perspective. That's all that I offer. I tell men to not get married, especially when you don't have wow. leverage. However, I also tell you, do not listen to people who simplify this. This is a very complicated thing oh, that most people fail at miserably. Got it. And let me, this is what I want let, people let to understand. Me, uh, let me tee up Hafiz because yeah. you used a few things there yeah. about not getting married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said sometimes you you're don't turning. have leverage. Okay, if you don't yeah. have leverage, we'll talk about that. Yeah. And you, you talk about turning into roommates. Well, this guy is the roommate, the host of the right. roommate channel. <laughs> right. Um, when you're hearing this, you've been married one year. And by the <sighs> way, this guy's a sharp, informed, very intentional guy. He's not, I, My assumption is he didn't just trip and fall into marriage. He's seen myself before. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So you've been you've been very, you're, you're a calculated dude. 100%. Okay. So when you're hearing Greg say this, yeah. and even when you're hearing Ali say this, how are you processing this information? No, this is really good, and I'm excited about how this conversation can develop because I think you've, you've maybe... Were, did you react to me and AMS's conversation a couple of years ago about marriage? I didn't react to it. I didn't do reaction video, okay. but yeah, I made a comment about okay, it. Okay, you made yeah. a comment about yeah. it. Okay, so, um, so to me, I'm really excited about it, but it's also key to talk about experience. Mm -hmm. Experience shapes your view, right? Yeah. So a girl who's been abused by a lot of different men, she's going to have a very cynical leaning view towards men a man who's been cheated by business partners will have a very cynical view about having mm -hmm. potential business partners so it's also unique to talk about where does my you get we have to be honest yeah nobody here is a hundred percent objective that's one of my arguments always with red pill stuff they said they're speaking the truth and you're not a robot you know you you have your biases mm -hmm. right call it for what it is we all have our biases i have biases you have biases coach has biases as much as we think we are we have to be 100 percent honest to the people about our biases if i'm an individual and i was divorced and i had a difficult experience via marriage i'm gonna have a biased opinion via marriage um ali has a positive experience with marriage so she can have a bias towards well great marriages can work right mm -hmm. so similar to me the people i admire the most the people I look up to are married people. Patrick Bed David, Jordan Peterson, my father, Pastor Mark Driscoll, people who I look up to the most, right? Long-term marriages, the people that I celebrate a lot, long-term marriages. My father and mother have been married for over 30 years. Great, healthy marriage. So that's my opinion. My mm -hmm. pastor, Pastor Tahadi Lewis, has been married for over 25 years. So I that's my worldview. And so to me, hearing what he's sharing, there is truth in that. Everything mm -hmm. where everyone's going to share is going to be truth in it. Yes, if you, like my dad told me a, a very powerful point. I love my father. He's so, such a wise older man. He said, the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is the one you marry. Yes. And, it can, and it can go one of two ways. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, this is what I want the guys to understand. We're not teaching naivete, which is, oh, marriage is a perfect thing. And you just meet the one and live happily ever after. Yeah. And there's no issues. There's no divorces. Right. That's we're not teaching naivete. Marriage can be the worst thing in your life. It can be an absolute living hell. And I guarantee you, you can go for days and for days. And you know so many different stories about people which marriage is an absolute living hell. But we don't want to teach being, being naive about the realities. But also, we don't want to teach nihilism. Right, the other end of the extreme. Marriage is the worst thing possible, and the women are out to get your money, and everyone's miserable, and everybody's roommates, and everybody's this. Because there are some individuals, mm -hmm. such as what Alice communicated, who, who are in happy, healthy, long-term marriage. Right. So you don't want to be naive. You want to be nihilistic. You want to be as real as possible. Give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. And my biggest thing is that I understand that marriage is a very difficult thing to get right. And and the same thing is like I love how what you do is marriage and money, right? I think we're going to be talking about those two things today. Adam, you're a 1% man financially. 
right? That means 99% of people are trying to get to where Adam is. Mm -hmm. Most people live paycheck to paycheck. They're struggling. Yep. Their lives suck when it comes to money. Most people are struggling, but they're trying to get where to where you are. That's how I view relationships. Most people are in really sucky relationship. Yeah. Most people, it's a day-to-day -day war, hell, the way work is, the way the gym is, but then there are some people who are having it at the highest of level. The same way we don't, nobody says, oh, well, most people are not going to be in the 1%, so screw it. You should even try. It's, oh my, oh, you know, 90% you know, of businesses end in, in, in 10 years. You should even try. We say, if somebody's going to succeed, why not you? It's what I love what mm -hmm. you're doing. If someone's going to be rich, why not you? If someone's going to make money, why not you? If someone's going to have a great podcast, why not you? So for me, I acknowledge that the, that the top of the mountain is rare. I acknowledge that. But what I also acknowledge is that if somebody's going to win, why not it be you? And how can we help as many men as possible get there? Everybody won't be able to get there, but how many people? How many people can we help get there? And that's what to me matters the most. Gotcha. Preach. I love that. Now, when you hear something like this, obviously he's sort of saying, "All right, I hear you, Coach. Your marriage didn't work. You got out. You know, thank God before the ten-year mark. So you'd probably be a little bit more spiteful than you are. I'm not saying that you're spiteful, but you'd be even more spiteful if you're paying a ridiculous amount of alimony and everything oh. that you'd be paying. But is there anything wrong with what he's saying? He's basically saying, "I hear you, Coach." It ain't easy out there, brother. Like, life's tough. Marriage is tough. Getting Making money is tough. Things are tough. But don't tell me that I shouldn't get married or don't tell me that I can't have a successful marriage. How I, do you process that? I don't think anyone says, do not get married. Yeah. I think they caution people to say, do not get married. If I say, do not get married without leverage, that is a position, right, mm -hmm. that you can change. Thus, if you read my book, it says once you get to that position, you can then make the decision. You'll probably come out better. Yeah. Than going in it without it. However, this is what I will always say. Mm -hmm. When men do find that that solution does not work out, they are left alone. There's nobody to help them. So people encourage people, hey, why not? Give it a try. But when you go bankrupt, when you lose your kids, when your kids are taken from you, mm -hmm. when the courts kind of punish you for making this decision or punish you, punishes you for being a slightly better, higher earner, then nobody's there with information. Nobody's there with context. No one's mm -hmm. there to help them. And I believe, not feel, I know, understand, believe, and I have evidence to show that men are left alone when they don't succeed in this endeavor. And that is the void that I feel because I can tell you, hey, men are alone in this situation. Men are homeless. Men are thinking about eating guns. Men are thinking about they have no way out. Men are losing big time and we're losing a fraction of men through, due to manipulation, due to people trying to, you know, they may be hurt. A woman might be hurt in a marriage mm -hmm. or she might feel that she's not being appreciated. And then she throws a grenade in the room. What happens then? See, that's where I come in. I get to show you what happens when the grenade is there. And I also encourage you, I, you're not alone in this. A lot of people come to my content and they find out, oh, you too? See, before, as I said, mm -hmm. 70 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, there was nobody presenting this side of the argument. This side, I see what you're saying. This right here. Got Nobody, it. they just left men alone and they said, well, you must not yeah. have been hitting it right or you must not have loved <laughs> her right or you must have abused the kids. That's what she said. She yeah. said that you were, and nobody came to this position. So I, listen, there was a void open and I ran right yeah, through the so when, So if you like that clip, click right here to watch another or if you want to watch the entire SauceCast, click right here.